to program. Good morning, everyone. Greetings at Ukraine Crisis Media Center, Press Center. We start our work on the topic of the first briefing, presentation of the report advocacy in the occupied Crimea, conditions of attorneys' work in occupied Crimea. I give the floor to the moderator of the discussion. Good afternoon. Thank you for being with us today. First, I would like to tell you about the idea, how it appeared, the idea of the report. Everything started in 2017 after the detention of Emil Karbutinov, a lawyer, and Lozova. And uh, before this, lawyers started to tell us that their rights are continuously violated. and. Uh, in 2014, they have to pass an exam once again in order to protect the rights of people in Crimea and to enter a lawyer's chamber in Crimea and Sevastopol. We carried out a survey, and we surveyed 18 lawyers who deal with, crim crim uh, with the Crimea cases and 14 members of the families who live in the territory of Crimea, and we opened used open sources information, and we didn't find any lawyer who would say that his right, uh, rights are not violated. So uh, I would like to mention those rights and methods that are used by Russian Federation in order to interfere in the work of the lawyers. And then I will give the floor to my colleagues. And later on, we will have a Q&A session. So this is uh, persecutions without participation of lawyer, territorial issues. These people may be brought to the territory of Russian Federation, and this uh, complicates the access of the lawyer. Also, the proceedings are violated concerning complaints, access to materials of the case access of lawyers to places of detention, confidentiality issues, infrastructure of detention facilities, lack of uh, places for visits, administrative and criminal persecutions of the lawyer, pressure on lawyers and discreditation of lawyers, hiding of the place where people are detained, falsified evidence and uh, uh, impossibility to verify their truthfulness. Um, they do not allow lawyers to enter, to bring some places of detention, to bring some materials of cases out of these facilities, and also pressure on people uh, in order to reject, that they reject the lawyer. Also, our analyst uh, uh, provided fresh statistics uh, concerning persecutions, uh, 132 cases against um, uh, Crimea, 98 cases, 94 people are in detention, 66 among them are Crimean Tatars, and 30 in Crimea, and 55 in the territory of Russian Federation. And uh, two people, we do not know where they are now and politically motivated persecutions, administrative persecution, uh, about uh, 350 cases starting 2014. You will have all the statistics. My colleague will give you the statistics in the course of our presentation. Now I would like to give the floor to uh, Olga Tseitlin. No, uh, she is uh, a lawyer and she's going to tell you about the problems our lawyers face in the territory of the Russian Federation. Good morning, dear friends. This is all I know in Ukrainian. I will speak Russian. I understand Ukrainian. My son speaks Ukrainian fluently, and he teaches me to speak Ukrainian. But I will tell you 
uh, in Russian about violations of the rights of lawyers in the territory of Russian Federation, whether we like it or not. Russia controls the, ter uh, controls the territory of Crimea, efficiently controls it. And all systemic violations of lawyers' rights that are present in Russian Federation, they were also transferred to, to Crimea. I will bring several examples, and I will tell you about what is going on, about systemic violations of the rights of lawyers in Russia. First, this is access uh, to uh, people who were detained. I mean lack of such access. Lawyers have big troubles uh, trying to visit uh, the person after he or she was detained. Also, uh, prosecutors ask for documents that are not envisaged by legislation, for example, permit from prosecution. And when the person, it is when the person is detained or when he is in pretrial detention facility. But according to the law, the lawyer has the right to visit him and uh, he should have a, a certificate of lawyer and an order. But also they ask for some permits, but the law does not envisage such provision in the number of regions, especially in Moscow, when you enter Lefortova, they ask for such permissions. And there are situations, and we have them in Crimea, uh, some investigators or operative officers, they ask some documents that are not envisaged by law. Also, uh, they are hiding the place of detention, and they say that they didn't detain this person. I work in St. Petersburg, and we spend a potent amount of time to find out where people are detained. And in Crimea, the situation is the same. Also, the lawyers are prohibited to work with office equipment. We cannot bring co cameras, copying devices, computers, uh, uh, voice recorders, computers, and we cannot get from our defendants uh, some uh, equipment and materials, and this is absurd. And Olga Dinza, uh, the lawyer, she protected Baluch and uh, Sensov, and she protected also those people who were accused of a terror attack in St. Petersburg, she was brought to responsibility because she took a document from the defendant. According to the law, you may see the lawyer, but you cannot hear him or her. But uh, people believe that there is wiretapping because all the strategy of defense is known to persecutors after this. So they say, record this and give us this document. And the lawyer was brought to admit uh, disciplinary responsibility. And uh, there was warning against her. And the uh, advocate's chamber brought her to this responsibility uh, concerning administration of uh, a pretrial detention facility. <coughs> In court, in the court process, we face problems, we Russian lawyers. This is communication with defendant if we have uh, uh, Skype connection. And also in Crimea, people are brought from Crimea to the regions of Russia, such as Rostov, and in the process, they use video conferences. and. Uh, there is no visual contact, and it is not prohibited by law, but our uh, judges sometimes they do not allow us to have it. And Article 6 of European Convention says that the lawyer may sit near the defendant, and uh, oh, there is no visual content, and the uh, speech is delayed, and uh, nothing is uh, uh, translated what is in the process. Only the questions from judge and answers from defendant. I work with foreign citizens and we see this typical violation. Next. Till now and uh, maybe this is still in Crimea. 
Some defendants are in the cage in the court's room, and this is a, a violation of Article 3 of European Convention, and this is inhumane treatment because people see this person, and uh, these cages are widespread in Russian courts. And now there was an initiative that we should place a lawyer also in the cage, and this, was, uh, this idea was spread through Facebook because representative of federation, he said that this is really costly to remove those cages. Maybe lawyers should be in some premise, not the defendants. This is sad, and this is also funny. Uh, aquariums um, that exist uh, in the territory of Russian Federation, also they do not provide the confidentiality and contact with the defendant is really hot. and. Um, uh, we cannot hear people well. It is important, impossible to stay there for defendant in summer, for example, in St. Petersburg. Also, copying of materials before pre-trial investigation ends. Uh, they prohibit to do this, but all the materials that are submitted to defendant's lawyer, um, he has the right to copy these documents and to study these documents. And this was case of Maslov. So if you study the document, you may photocopy it. And the linguistic ex examinations that are carried out in his Butakrir case, we see that the lawyers cannot photocopy these materials before uh, these uh, pretrial investigations. And, and uh, it is difficult to copy by hand because there are many pages, for example, 10-page examination, but the lawyer has the right to get these materials before the pretrial investigation, and uh, they do not have legal grounds uh, to prohibit it, but legal practice in Russia and in Crimea shows that investigators, they uh, give these materials only after pretrial investigation ends, about requests of the lawyers. Uh, there was a norm that uh, during three days the investigator should uh, provide information on the request of the lawyer. He should put his signature and in three days he should reply. So uh, we wanted the best, you know, the rest. Uh, also, there are new requirements to lawyer's request. And the term of response now is one month. This is absurd, because sometimes you need to get information quickly. And investigators, they say, we have term, one month, and we won't put signature. And uh, uh, please uh, just uh, uh, deal with the office. We won't put our signature there. The same in Russia, with the same in Crimea. Also, we cannot find uh, urgent information that we need because all requests and petitions and criminal processes, they are c um, c considered as these requests I've mentioned. Also, uh, advocates request uh, also, uh, they say about special form. If the form is not right, uh, this brings not only non-response, but also if you didn't uh, put some number or some name, or y you may be brought to responsibility, but there is also responsibility uh, for officials uh, who do not respond uh, to the request uh, during one mon month, also lawyer may collect evidence, he may do it personally, and all evidence have equal power as evidence that are collected by uh, prosecution and uh, um, uh, defense, uh, quality of arms, it, it, it is called. And uh, when uh, interviews and interrogations uh, are held, all evidence uh, that are collected, they do not have equal power, they should be confirmed by investigator in the proceedings. Uh, he should warn about giving false evidence and uh, um, lawyers also are warned about this. So our evidence uh, do not have any power before this uh, uh, 
interrogation by investigator. And we have some uh, courts that we won in European court. So uh, the uh, witnesses, they provide some evidence, for example, that some people were taken away. I saw this, and we record this all. Then the <laughs> investigator asks them, and they say that they were um, uh, this was Christmas, they were drunk, and they do not know whether this was true, and uh, he have, <coughs> we have two protocols, one presented by the lawyer, one presented by the in, uh, investigator, and uh, the judge takes uh, the document that is provided by investigator and do not take into account uh, the document that is provided by the lawyer. So. <coughs> This is about procedural issues. What is going now? Despite all explanations uh, of uh, the um, advocates' bodies, uh, advocates still uh, are asked to go to interrogation, and uh, they um, say that the lawyers should. Uh, <coughs> speak out about the secrets of uh, uh, these persons uh, and uh, <coughs> we <coughs> we are trying to get documents in order not to go to these interrogations uh, and uh, uh, people are asked for these interrogations uh, and uh, in St. Petersburg we see that in um, St. Petersburg we do not have it. And then there are searches uh, uh, in the premises of the lawyers. Uh, and um, uh, on, uh, when the searches are carried out, the advocates chamber representative should be present. And this is established by document as of 17 of April 2017. And if there is a secret that is not connected with the case, uh, and advocate secret and um, concerning other cases, or in this case, and this is not the subject of uh, this search, this person, this representative of advocates chamber, he forbids to take these uh, objects. Uh, and uh, in St. Petersburg, we have it. In other regions, this is different. Uh, doors are broken, and they uh, put all the materials on the floor, and it is difficult to find out uh, what documents belong to which case. Uh, and we have Article 540, and uh, we should use it if there is such. An investigator should provide this information to advocates' chamber, and uh, uh, these people from the chamber, they do not even know where to go to what lawyers. This process is not well established now. Sometimes a representative of the advocate's chamber who is present during the search, he has only nominal role, and uh, he do not know, he does not know how to record uh, violations in a proper way in the process uh, when the dossiers are um, taken away and these dossiers belong to other cases. Also, uh, uh, they try to remove the lawyers from the cases using uh, uh, they take away some documents from them, and this infringes the work and the publicity of the process. They forbid to tell the media or the relatives uh, or to defend uh, uh, if this is state secret, you cannot even tell this information because they 
take uh, the note concerning secrecy from you and you are responsible and you may be sent to prison for 15 years for a violation of this. Why it is done still in Russia and in Crimea, there is lack of responsibility for interference of professional activity. And in Ukraine you have uh, such a type of activity if the power persecute you uh, and if they infringe the rights of the law, there is criminal responsibility for this. In Russia they do not have such responsibility at all. And what happens uh, as of today, we see uh, rigid pressure on lawyers concerning their um, professional activity. You know uh, these cases in Russia. Sotnikov lawyer case, he was not allowed to the process and he had the order, the certificate and he, uh, they put handcuffs on him and uh, uh, brought him out. Uh, Burkina case, disciplinary responsibility for criticism of the judges. Disciplinary responsibility is one thing, but also there are verdicts con concerning lawyers. For example, Zagorsky, this is lawyer, and he was sentenced to seven years, eight months in prison. I would like to read what was said in the verdict. So what he did, why he was provided with such big sentence of seven years, he used uh, his uh, interests uh, and uh, he got some payment for his services and he was personally interested in the case. He wanted to promote his career and he wanted to uh, further cooperate with the client and uh, this uh, a payment would allow him to have sustainable legal practice. And for this, he was given seven years, eight months in prison. And in the verdict, it is stated that this is persecution for uh, his professional activity and federal chamber. Um, uh, they sent letters, uh, but uh, he was still in prison for his professional activity, and I believe that these rigid practices may be transferred to Crimea, or some of them may be implemented even now. Thank you very much. Sorry for taking um, this time, so I would like to give the floor to my colleagues. Thank you, Olga. And uh, we really would like to thank you for these uh, uh, bright examples. Uh, Vladimir Zhbankov, he is co-author of this report. Zhbankov, my name is Zhbankov. Yeah. I am a co-author of this report, and I am the, um, also the expert of the House of Free uh, Russia in Kiev. Uh, and uh, the, we have a comprehensive overview of violations of rights of the lawyers in Russia. And final argument is really important. Uh, jurisdiction went to the peninsula after annexation and Russia implemented control there. And uh, legal practices of Russian Federation usually uh, and now they are um, continuously going to the territory of Crimea. First years, this was uh, 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 to some extent a romantic period. Now this period is over. And uh, uh, in our report, you may see that the majority of violations, uh, they exist in Crimea and they will uh, become larger. Maybe for them it is easier to enter to the territory of Crimea because from the start, from the seizure, uh, the uh, lawyer's community was reloaded and they filtered the lawyer and they selected those out that uh, do not correspond. And um, these violations are e easy to make, uh, easier to make uh, in the territory of Crimea. Uh, what is missing from the report, and this is uh, the subject for our future work. This is uh, the study of those who violate. Because we studied violations, uh, but they are carried out uh, by some specific people, by some specific state bodies. When the Crimea was seized, I worked in a 
Legal Academy of Moscow, and there was a sad joke uh, at the chair of constitutional law that uh, when Russia seized Crimea, it became federation once again because Crimea had the special state uh, uh, regulations uh, were different. Uh, and uh, uh, now everything is leveled, uh, and the um, repressive bodies of Russia I in Crimea were built, and uh, they are not done in a good way. So Crimea is uh, uh, represent two, uh, two subjects, Sevastopol and uh, uh, Crimean Republic is itself. Why Sevastopol is a separate entity, this is a separate conversation. In Crimea, there is no uh, military court. And uh, that's why people are brought, for example, to Rostov. And uh, this impedes uh, 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 lawyers to protect the uh, um, defendants. And uh, the investigation system it differs uh, from that that exists in the Russian Federation, and this should be uh, the topic for our next research. And about good things, how we can find with all these terrible violations. I believe that uh, there are several important areas. The first one is about lawyers. This is self-organization of lawyers community. Uh, if we speak about Lefortova and visits there, we see that uh, lawyers, they are drawing and they visit uh, the defendants and uh, um, the investigation interrogators, they um, create obstacles and lawyers, they do not want to argue with each other. They uh, were able to organize themselves and to establish proper civilized processes about Moscow case we see self-organization among uh, lawyers when in the process of the protests um, uh, um, uh, in Moscow and New Moscow, uh, peop, uh, lawyers, they provide uh, protection to all who uh, uh, needed this. And um, uh, lawyers should be helped. Uh, and the uh, uh, families of the defendants also should be helped, and uh, those who were uh, sentenced uh, as well. And this work gives us a feeling um, that uh, we believe that uh, civil society should organize itself, but first we should stop, uh, feel the sphere, and uh, uh, lawyers and uh, civil society organizations and all those who deal with the help to those who are repressed, they collect a lot of information and uh, it should be aggregated uh, in uh, a good form. It, they should be translated into English and uh, they should be brought to international level because uh, um, the world uh, does not see clearly the scope of repressive machine of Russian Federation. For example, about permit of the uh, investigator to the lawyer to see his defendant, this, uh, just to see this person. European colleagues, uh, for them, this is like a f horror film. They believe that this is impossible. Uh, so those things uh, to which we got accustomed to, the crisis is uh, going on for years. So we should bring these people to the world and there will be international pressure and also we have many international institutions starting the Council of Europe, uh, there is the European Court of Justice, Parliamentary Assembly and many other bodies where you may pressure the bodies of uh, Russian Federation. This is not only the Council of Europe, but also there are many starting UNO to cultural organizations uh, in which Russia participates. They cannot denounce all the agreements. And uh, we should be efficient in bringing information to the world. And uh, in this way, we may improve the conditions of our work inside the country.
Thank you very much, Vladimir. Now I give the floor to Sergei Ligostov, uh, and uh, he knows the situation in Crimea. Please, Sergei, what can you tell us about it, and what can be the resolution of this problem? How to improve the conditions for the work of the lawyers in Crimea? Uh, so, uh, good afternoon. I am uh, Sergei uh, Legostov. Maybe only lawyers know how to do this. Speaking about the topic that Olga started, at the legislative level in the Russian Federation, Efficient and uh, real protection of lawyers' rights is absent when they implement constitutional act uh, rights concerning uh, protection of their defendants. And uh, there are interferences in the world uh, work of lawyers. In criminal code of Ukraine, there are five or six articles we've mentioned, and uh, the article about physical immunity. The law protects lawyers much better. And um, in Crimea, those violations my colleague Olga mentioned, this is about visits of lawyers, of the defenders, defendants. And uh, there is one detention, pretrial detention facility, maybe. Uh, and uh, this is an old building of uh, maybe 200 years. Uh, uh, so there are some premises for relatives of uh, those uh, uh, who are detained. Uh, seven or eight rooms for all Crimea, for lawyers, for interrogators, uh, for FSB officers, and non transparent. Uh, going to this pretrial detention facility. So uh, there are different ways uh, how to go there. Some rooms are occupied, especially at the end of the half year, quarter of the year, and the interrogators, investigators, they occupy these rooms, and lawyers come to Simferopol from other regions. Uh, uh, of Crimea to visit. Sometimes they fail about confidentiality of these visits. And these visits, this time is limited. This is one and a half hours before dinner, the same time after dinner. So you enter, you stay there, you go out, and in half past four, people are once again brought to the cells. I would like to mention some aspects in relations to the lawyer. So, uh, so twice the lawyer was under investigations for putting some information on social media, some videos, some posts about a political party in 2013 and he was brought to responsibility in four years after this. And the punishment that was used was administrative arrest, but uh, they could do it differently. Not always uh, the lawyers may timely get information about the place where the person is held. And not always uh, they provide tim timely access to uh, the defendant and the norm in the law, uh, defendant may reject the lawyer, but uh, he may do it even without seeing him. And when you look through the materials of the case, me or my colleague, so when you protect some people, you see that there are two or three rejections from the lawyers that they didn't see, and they write their names, their surnames, and they say that they reject these lawyers, they do not need these lawyers, and they want some other lawyer. In order to reject something or someone, a person should see this person, to speak with this lawyer, to know 
where he comes from, who appointed him, not who appointed him, but who invited him. Maybe he understands uh, that relatives invited this lawyer, but uh, somehow he rejects this lawyer. Maybe this is done because of the pressure from investigators. Uh, uh, when it uh, concerns about uh, the record, records of evidence, they, uh, there are some uh, lawyers, we believe that they are traitors in our community. We know their names. They work in some, concerning some cases, and they successfully do reverse things, and they put their signatures on the evidences of our um, defendants uh, that were forced uh, evidence. And also, uh, some investigators, they got information that the lawyer has some facts, uh, some evidence concerning the case. He, uh, the interrogator got this information from defendant and interrogators, they asked the court to uh, give permission for interrogation of the lawyer, and in this way, the lawyer could not continue uh, his uh, functions about uh, transfer to Rostov from Crimea to uh, Southern Military uh, District Court, where cases are heard mainly concerning Crimean Tatars for their participation in uh, political party Hizbut Tahrir. The lawyers uh, orally and in writing, they uh, say that uh, violations of the rights uh, happen. This is illegal transfer, and this is Article 4 of Geneva Convention. And uh, I see that in some cases, the court, uh, they nominate the case for hearing, and uh, they um, uh, have two uh, groups of uh, lawyers without uh, the consent of defendant. Uh, they just appoint the lawyer, the advocate for defendant. They are may be present, they do not interfere, and if uh, some lawyers uh, are not able to participate in court hearing, uh, so these cases are not delayed, just another lawyer is appointed. If uh, a prosecutor or a lawyer uh, gets ill, then they um, delay the case, but the lawyer, he do not ha does not have such a right, they just uh, uh, so if they get ill, the case is not delayed. Our lawyer also visited st uh, our um, de defendants in st uh, Stavropol um, region, and this was uh, braining of uh, some recording equipment to the colony. This is directly prohibited by law when uh, the persons are sentenced. Uh, in some circumstances, uh, in order to record, uh, uh, the court allows this, but in both colonies, they just directly rejected uh, this right, and uh, uh, he was requested to go without this equipment, and he will send his complaints about this concerning the violation of his rights as a lawyer. And the person is detained, for example, uh, in a case. And uh, if the protocols are not made properly about detention, if it is falsified by law enforcement officers, administrative protocols are compiled concerning, for example, minor hooliganism. For example, a person. Uh, used improper language, uh, and uh, then two witnesses appear, and uh, s uh, this person is uh, under administrative arrest, and lawyers can get cannot get information about uh, his uh, 
place where he is held, uh, in which pretrial detention facility he is held. And during this time, we are going back to our main topic, a lawyer that is appointed is working with this person during this time while he is in detention. Also, the law envisages uh, competitiveness. But the lawyer, they are not equal to investigation and to the uh, court. And uh, uh, if uh, uh, there are evidence, for example, some examinations uh, that are presented by prosecution, they are heard by court, but they do not include the examinations provided by the specialists, uh, by experts. Uh, court considers them unground, uh, groundless and uh, that they are not needed to the court. If there are some needs, uh, uh, if we are speaking about some concrete cases, to declare any examinations that are needed, the court rejects this idea. They say that this is not obligatory, that uh, appointment and uh, carrying out of such examination is not needed. But uh, the court in this way, uh, they are not to the point because there are some obligatory examinations, but there are many others that are not envisaged in law, but without uh, the um, use, uh, we won't be able to fix the evidence or to reject those evidences that were fixed, recorded. Among us, we have uh, also people who know about uh, conditions in pretrial detention facility, about the premises, about uh, food there, and uh, they may tell us about uh, this because they know these conditions. Um, I believe that uh, the most important thing uh, that uh, the lawyers uh, uh, should, could, be, uh, could protect the um, defendants is that the lawyers, they should be uh, protected by law in a good way, because they cannot defend someone if they are not protected themselves, especially in uh, loud political cases and in other cases. This is briefly what I wanted to say. Thank you, Sergei. Before having Q&A session, I would like to ask my colleagues, maybe you want to add something else. Is this all? Briefly, I would like to say we've mentioned the lawyer's solidarity. The more the pressure, the more it increases in the number of cases concerning Binyasha, lawyer, persecution. They said that uh, he uh, just, not that he was beaten, but they said that uh, he was trying to break his head and uh, that he beat his head against uh, the walls uh, of the uh, car. And there were 50 colleagues who came uh, to protect him and more than 400 people signed the petition and 30 colleagues protected him and advocates chamber. They also provided a pledge, a monetary pledge, and uh, um, he was released on bail. And uh, now we have a verdict, and he was sentenced to pay a fine. And uh, this was due to solidarity of lawyers. And you see the pressure, and Mikhail Binyash, he protected those people who participated in the meeting in his city. They pro uh, protested against falsification of elections. So you see that uh, uh, the lawyer, he was accused of beating himself against the walls. and. He uh, got this sentence, uh, they accused him, and uh, Advocates Solidarity Prague Club and others, uh, this is non-governmental institutions. And Federal Chamber of Lawyers, they do not protect the lawyers properly, they do not attend hearings, but uh, 
regional uh, chambers are important, uh, especially in St. Petersburg. They really protect their lawyers. Tens of uh, lawyers try to help. No one pays us for this. And uh, some protesters, they were protected due to NGOs um, who are now being persecuted, and there are less and less uh, possibilities to get money from NGOs. The lawyer can not just work pro bono without pay, especially in loan difficult cases. Please, now we have Q&A session. In 10 minutes, we'll have next event, so you have about five minutes. Dmitro Hilyukunyan, maybe I will surprise you with my question. In Ukraine, we have a different problem. When some lawyers, unfair lawyers, we are speaking about cases of Maidan, they may delay cases. They just do not turn on in, uh, to court, and four or five times, they do not turn uh, to the court and they do not bear any responsibility. What is the practice in Russia concerning this case? Uh, can a lawyer, uh, uh, for example, if the lawyer do not attend court hearings, what is the responsibility? And the question to Sergei, you have mentioned that lawyers, they are detained for 10 days in order to have some lawyer that is uh, appointed. Whether it is criminal or administrative uh, responsibility in this case. I brought example about a lawyer. I won't mention his name. He was brought to administrative responsibility. For his reposts. Information about his Buddha Khrir party in 20. 13, he presented this, uh, uh, his ideas on this in Facebook. And the court, they had alternative uh, ways how to punish him, but they um, appointed five or ten days of arrest to him concerning administrative punishment for him. If the lawyer does not go to court without proper reason, the court's response harshly on this. And they appoint another lawyer. If a lawyer didn't turn to the court without proper reason and the court hearing was broken, courts, they really sharply respond on this, respond on, that, on this. And uh, when they continued the term of one for one defender, there were two lawyers in this case, and one lawyer was rejected by the defendant, but the investigator forgot to put this document uh, concerning this petition. He didn't include it into the materials, and uh, when two lawyers uh, um, including those lawyer who was rejected. Uh, there was a complaint to the advocate's chamber concerning the second lawyer as well. So this is the fault of investigation. They didn't work properly in this case. If you do not have other questions, this, we thank you all for your attention. And now you may speak with the speakers of records. Thank you.